Hello, I'm the CNC Repairman, and in this video, I'm going to go over the different tool release pistons and how to use a rebuild kit to rebuild it. It may look a little bit difficult when you get one and the O-ring seems larger than it's supposed to be and it's not in the right shape. I assure you, it can go together and I will show you how to take it apart and put it back together. To begin with, a little bit of overview. There are three different sizes of TRPs, tool release pistons. And this is the piston that when air is applied to it, it unclamps the drawbar by pushing the bottom of the piston down through this shaft and then contacting the top of the drawbar with the left hand threaded bolt. There's a little hole inside this part that runs air through this hole all the way through the drawbar just to give it that little burst of air out of the tool when you hear it unclamp the tool. If you hit the button and you feel the air on the bottom of the spindle, that's what you're feeling. So a couple of things can go bad with this tool release piston. If you have dirty and sticky air and a really dirty shop environment, over time the piston will look completely black or just nasty. Now that won't cause a problem, but it'll be kind of gross if you have to go to work on it. So the inside of these pistons get nasty and then when it goes to clamp, it won't fully unclamp or when it goes to go back, it'll be really slow and kind of make a farting noise. That means that there's probably gunk, you've got a bad or worn out o-ring, I've seen the snap rings fail on this spring so it doesn't go back up, I've seen the shafts actually do a couple of things. One, the threaded bolt gets unthreaded and it rips the threads out, or the shaft just breaks in half, or they get worn if your machine has a couple million tool changes. So, repair kits. CNC replacement parts offers a replacement shaft by itself, and they offer the repair kit, which includes the O-ring, the snap rings, and the left-hand threaded bolt for the small, medium, and large. These are both the large pistons. If you go to pull one apart and you want to make it look this nice, I just dropped it inside of my little ultrasonic cleaner for like an hour and then scrubbed it and it came out really quick and easy. So outside dirtiness isn't really a problem. Let's talk about taking it apart. If it's working and you're concerned that you want to fix it, you need to depress the spring. The way I've found you can use a wire tie and you put three or four wire ties all the way around it, tighten them up and that'll depress the spring enough to take a snap ring, pliers, pop the snap ring off, and pull it out. So give me a minute here, I gotta get some tools and we'll depress this spring. So there's probably an easier way to do this in a drill press, depress this, a couple things. I usually work in the field and have limited tools and not every machine shop has what I need. So this is a simple way to just depress the spring. So I've got it depressed enough. There we go. Now I can pull that off. That just has one way it goes. The spring is mostly depressed. Let's see if I need a hammer to get this apart. Okay, there it goes. Let's see how nasty it is inside. Yeah, it's kind of gross. I've never taken this apart. So, there you can see, that's just years and years of gunk, nastiness, but there's the O-ring. Okay, to clean all of this up inside here, put a little bit of lube on that O-ring and put it back together, you'll probably get a lot more years out of this. You could replace that O-ring, there's a snap ring and another O-ring inside there. There's actually an older style of this, and this is the newer style. This is the part that you can get at CNC replacement parts. The oldest one does not have a left-handed thread bolt. The newer one does, and the newer one may or may not have a hex, but it's reverse compatible, so the newer one will work in the older one. So let's just, for kicks, act like I'm gonna clean this and put it back together. You see how the O-ring kind of has this shape? It will easily go back together and shouldn't be too hard. I can just poke it in, but notice how it kind of starts to poke out. And if I try to work my way around, it's just gonna keep popping up. Now, a brand new O-ring will be even more difficult than this because it's not in the square or rectangle shape. So, if you can kind of get it like that, get the piston, this is the piston, that's the cylinder, ready, and then you can, you want the, O-ring in this shoulder here, but you don't want it folded 
and kind of fold it inside and then this won't go all the way down. If this doesn't go all the way in with either the old O-ring or the new O-ring, you know you don't have it together correctly. And you can kind of get guided in there and then poke your fingers down and go all the way around. And let's see if I can get it. Okay, so that should go further in. So I don't know if I have it all the way in at the moment. Let's pop it out and look at it. Okay. No, I'm just going to poke it down a little bit more with my fingers and we'll try it again. There, there. Hopefully you heard it. That time it went all the way in and it's all the way back. So before you take one apart, you can kind of get a feel or just kind of caliber this and know how deep it is. It's the same thing. My hands are nasty and I don't want to do it on this new one, but if you're putting together a small, medium or large, put a little bit of grease on that O-ring, get it upside down, and then you're just gonna kinda force it and force it and keep your fingers all the way in, upside down, keep forcing, keep forcing, and then it'll go all the way in. So that's how you rebuild your tool release piston and how you have smooth tool changes. If you need parts, if you need help doing this, give CNC replacement parts a call or look them up on their website. All of these parts are available there. Thanks for watching.